Hey traders, Ragi here and in this recap video we're going to go over the Euro, longer term play, NASDAQ and Nikkei from today's chat room. So I want to emphasize it's always when, I won't say always always, but it's usually when a market makes a brand new high that it ends up on people's radar. And what I want to emphasize here is the importance of this zone in here. Within the context of a trend, when we get a retracement, having the faith to know that corrections are support within the context of a trend, building a position from aggressive levels to conservative levels within that zone, and then waiting for the catalyst or the follow through to kick this thing back in gear is really what, for me, trend trading, swing trading is all about. Identifying the trend, identifying the retracement, building the position, and then waiting for the catalyst that's going to help the market accelerate back out of that retracement low. Now, the thing to keep in mind is today's not the day to get long, gang. This is all about follow through. So if you entered with me in the zone between the 118 and 117 handle, please take something off the table here as we approach 120. Okay, you don't have to go too flat. If you want to back off to a 100 pip trailing stop, this is not an arbitrary number. 100 pips for the euro versus US is the daily price movement range. So you can go ahead and lock that in. We have a saying in the chat room, show me your stop and I'll show you your PL. This way, if the you know what hits the fan, this way we know worst comes to worst. You took a little something off the table with anywhere from 170 to a 270 pip profit. Take maybe half off the table and then trail the remainder of the position at a 100 pip stop. You don't even have to do that. You can keep a break even, but if you're really interested in capturing most of your unrealized profit, a trailing with a 100 pip, you know, kind of backing off is the mentality I keep is what you want to do. So there's your, there's your, uh, there are the steps for how you would manage this trade. Okay, next up, Nikkei. Let's take a look at the five minute. This is from the chat room, but I want to emphasize these two setups because you guys can recreate this at home. All right, what were we looking for this morning? Straight from the notes, a 535 resistance on the daily, 19,535 at the 13 EMA got my attention, but I didn't want to just short that ceiling, that exhaustive ceiling. I wanted to wait for bearish momentum. And that was the five minute rollover short sell through basically 19,460. It gave us about 40 points and that isn't too shabby. Now 40 points within the context of this move, when I say it's not too shabby, what I'm doing, what we like to use in the chat room is the price movement ranges and take a look at the hourly price movement range. 40 for the time of day is kind of low, but right in the sweet spot. So if you're looking for a typical price movement range for the hours that we were taking this trade, take a peek, 40 to 60. You know, you could put an initial profit target at 40 and another one at 60. That's another way to do it. The other thing is the 40 pip level also coincided with the 20 minor psych level. And then worst comes to worst, if you didn't catch either one of those, when we hook back up through 19,440, you take your 20 pips and you get, you know, basically 15, not pips, points, and you just get out. Either way, decent winner. Pretty nice winner if you use the hourly price movement range and the minor psych. The NASDAQ, this was interesting because we looked for a short on NK, but a long for the NAS from 58.25 on a five or 15 minute time frame. So this wasn't too bad, that's the zone. Looking for follow through from 58.25 to 58.28 up to initially 58.50. Again, we do the same thing. What's the typical price movement range follow through during this time of day? Take a look right here, about 22 to 27 points. Add 22 to 27 points, you factor in the major psych and that's exactly where we'd expect the initial resistance to pop in. Doesn't mean we have to get flat, but it does mean ideally we want to pay ourselves and move to a break even stop. 
And that's how you manage intraday timeframes, understanding what the typical price movement ranges are and taking profits when you can, not when you have to. Okay, same thing we're doing with the euro, taking profits when you can and not when you have to. And that's how we do it. I'll see you in the next update.